Welcome to the last paper session of the conference. Uh, after this session, there will be two more performances and then a wrap up panel where probably we can share all the new insights that we got uh, during the conference. Um, this session is also featuring two projects actually from Sao Paulo. Uh, so it's we're going across the Atlantic to uh, the southern hem hemisphere. Uh, the first paper is presented by Antonio Goulart, who's at the Sonology Research Center in Sao Paulo. And he's interested in sound in synthesis techniques, uh, but he's also live coding and uh, live coding the computer as part of a free improvisation orchestra. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, it's very nice to be here. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. And it's interesting, I never had another Antonio as a classmate. And right now I have this another Antonio at the same laboratory as I am. And we are presenting at the same session. See, it's funny. And I mean, usually the last session is the big one. So I'm not sure why I'm here. But I'll, I'll try to, to, tell, to tell you a good story. So we have this, this orchestra, free improvisation orchestra in Sao Paulo at the music department and four years ago I started playing this orchestra I used to, I was playing the guitar at the beginning but then I started like studying sound synthesis and I switched to the computer to maybe try new sounds in this this free improvisation or orchestra so Miguel like is the bass player in the orchestra we've like reflected a bit about this this, this process of life coding and that's what I'm talking about today and yeah, of course, everyone here knows about the first line. Uh, maybe the last line, I think so. And we've been talking a lot about pre improvisation in this, this conference the, this week. It's, it's interesting to see that. And I'll just talk a bit more today, just to, to be sure we are on the same page regarding pre improvisation. But yeah, so, oh, I have this one. So here I'm thinking about like the computer as a, um, a musical instrument like any other, or if you wish, live coding as a standalone instrument. So I'm not using, a, a, a about using controllers or like motion capture stuff like what was talk about in the keynote you know, today. I prefer to use on only the code in this like VI terminal. So I'm also not using not, not processing the uh, acoustic player's instruments. Uh, everybody asked me about that, so I'm already talking that it's like standalone. And uh, also, I'm not networked, of course, there's not computers. So it's not like the same as in laptop orchestras or group, like, like, like today they, they, they exchange some kind of information, or at least the, the, the clock or some stuff. And I'm also not using machine listening to, to to the musicians. Although I, I could do it, but I think it would be a bit too much for me. Maybe Nicolins can do it, but I can't. So yeah. So about the, the, the orchestra itself, so I'll just quickly show this is these are the members. So like trombone, flute, myself, saxophone, Miguel the bass player, clarinet, piano baritone and this last guy here plays everyday objects and, and also uses the voice and we had someone talking about like the Italian guy using the microphone to get everyday objects I, I send a reference to the to the guy thanks so yeah so all these acoustic musicians they, they they've been to lots of instrument training and ear training they are very good musicians but they had no previous knowledge about electronic music techniques before like since I don't know two or three years ago and if you think about live coding they really haven't heard about it and have no clue what was that so yeah in in, in, a, in an orchestra scenario especially in, in pre-improvisation orchestra it's very important on, on how to effectively be the like in interact, you, you need to, to have like a perfect interaction for each work. So we are 
in, in this orchestra are very interested in thinking about how to interact better. So we noticed some problems in our interactions and we started to think about why. So I'm, all, I'm only talking a bit about pre-improvisation now. First thing is that it's like a collective, and when in a group, of course, but it's a collective and, and, and collaborative thing, of course, so everyone is like working on the same event, which is doing the improvisation together. And this is very important. It, it requires like a benevolent behavior, or I mean, by benevolent behavior, what I mean is like, you, you, you don't try to get all the attention, so you avoid maybe polar actions. So especially in pre-improvisation, which I mean, we try to be like non-idiomatic, as the expression put by Derek Bailey. So usually, if you do some polar actions, uh, jazz scale, for example, you would like break all the the layer, the sounds with improvisations and and no idiomatic layers and just bring your, uh, all the attention to this polar action so you would avoid doing that and also use extended techniques to maybe bring the, the take the instruments to, to their limit and really try to overcome all the, the, the idioms and languages, musical languages. This is a very important thing in free improvisation that previous information about the other performance is, is not a requirement of, uh, it. And that's because uh, the interaction should be based like only on the, the, the sound musicians create on the actual performance. O only the sounds should be enough for this effect of interaction or for improvisation. Uh, for example, the bass player should interact with a drummer without needing to stare at him. So this may, might be very like obvious, but it's it, it's one of the premises of free improvisation. O only the sound is enough, and as a corollary, so knowledge of each other's instruments should also not be a prerequisite. It'll be clear why I'm talking about this. So, as another example, the bass player should be able to in interact with a drummer without knowing like anything about drumsticks or drum skins or anything like that. However, yeah, we all know something about this stuff and we, we, we take that into account when we are like jamming and we should only f focus on sound maybe with this Schaeferian reduced listening thing or <laughs> what Derek Bailey calls playing without memory. He says that the ideal free improviser is the one who has no memory at all. So completely like free in the sense of not relating to anything that that was mentioned before. Okay, okay now uh, uh, a bit about the instruments themselves. So the acoustic instruments, of course, you have immediacy between any gesture, any thing that you do with the body in the instrument and, and you get sounds, like it's immediate. And of course, that with live coding, there's a lag of both thinking about the algorithm and the code itself and both writing it. But with great lag comes great opportunities. <laughs> so <laughs> we can, yeah. So again, of course, like program sounds for the future and we're not limited for the acoustic timbre of a specific instrument, but we can do like any sound. So this should be taken in, in, into account in this free improvisation scenario, of course. So the projection itself, we, we, we all know about this showing this screen thing, the manifesto and stuff, but at first we didn't use projection in, in orchestra. Oh, by the way, it's called Orchestra uh, Ehante, which is like from Error, you know, the word from Error in Portuguese. So our audience is, is usually like, they, they are really not used to anything that's not acoustic instruments. So projecting that the, they screen this orchestra, in our opinion, would blur all the attention to, to the group performance. It wouldn't be a problem, but it would blur the attention to the music. With now the big problem is like paying too much attention to the code or maybe to the visual thing and forgetting about the music that's being done. So we didn't project at first, but we thought that maybe that would be one of the reasons our interaction was not good enough. And in one of our like meetings, we weekly meetings, I, I showed, I, I projected the, the like the live coding and 
talked a bit, a bit about the, the well, before talking about it, just follow here this script. So it's more, we noticed that it was more, more natural for the bass player to jam with the drummer than with myself. Of course, that by bass player, I mean the full orchestra. And what happens was like the, the live coded sounds would be like background layers in the string improvisation music that we were doing. And meanwhile, the, the acoustic instruments, we, we could notice uh, lots of conversation between the musicians, but my sound would like behave as a set of background layers, not interacting. I, I wasn't influencing anyone. I wasn't fast enough to, to maybe follow someone's uh, intentions, musical intentions or leads. I don't know. Yeah, one problem might be like an musician the anxiety and worrying about the immediacy, but uh, maybe another one was not knowing what happens inside the computer when, when I'm there with the computer. So yeah, in one of the, the, the our meetings, rehearsals, we, I, I, I projected and how much, how much time I have? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, okay, so yeah, and then I projected and, and, and like spend some good hours talking to them about all the process of love coding so show them how, how it works that it's actually writing code not like using an interface where I can I have like immediacy and that it takes some time to, to, to program a musical intention but after you get some code with like few variations you can get uh, huge uh, outcomes and yeah I mean in, in Instant, instantaneously, we, we, the interaction, the, the gem was, was better. And yeah, a little comment. They are very smart people when you have their attention. And yeah, uh, also the, 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 um, we tried that in some of our concerts, presentations, and it didn't learn that much the attention. So we, we, from there, we kept the, 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 the projection thing. So, uh, I mean, it was very fast, uh, all, all the history, but of course it, it was a process of talking to them and showing the, 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 the live coding. And they are all in the doing masters or PhD in the music department, so they are like studying contemporary music and most, at least half of them are into electronic music studies and techniques. They are, uh, uh, three of them, I can show you a video later, uh, are, are like extending their instruments to hybrid instruments with electronic processing and live electronics. So uh, by now, I think they, they, they are like more, they, they have much more knowledge of what, how to incorporate electronic tools in their instruments in there uh, as, a, as a, uh, a new tool. So some questions about that. If we should break this free improvisation uh, presupposition about the interaction only through sound and add this given that everyone have an idea about each other's instruments nature because I mean uh, only after I showed him what I was doing here we could effectively interact and we and understand by the time they understood what, what, ha what was happening the, the, the interaction like really started to happen they, they understood that they had to give me some time to follow them or like make prepare like uh, uh, a layer of for me to to have my sounds in it and then we talk better something like that so this is one of the things i was talking uh, i was thinking another one if uh, acoustic musicians should learn code coding to become better orchestra musicians by orchestra of course i don't mean symphonic orchestra or something, but in this case, another question is how feasible it is to perform an acoustic instrument in the spring improvisation context, which is like very abstract and which are also exploring extended techniques, which are usually difficult to achieve in the instruments. So how feasible it is to do, do that and simultaneously read code from the live coder or, uh, at your orchestra? Another one, if, is it too much to expect that the acoustic musicians will read the code and write and understand where I'm sonoros sonorously going and make room for the new sound? And I mean, would that be a bridge to the future like this 
code so fish idea of being able to learn the code and think about the sounds the, the way you can think about the sound that you will come out of a guitar if you play that third fret or something <laughs> but the pitfall is they would be paying too much attention to my code in detriment of the other musician sounds that maybe if they could do it it's not impossible I know it's difficult to ask like some musicians to learn coding but if they do of course they will be paying too much attention to my coding and and also to the sounds of course uh, but I mean some of us already do live coding and know of course how to program and play are very uh, I'm sure that most of us here can play some instruments you could like try it like how it is to play acoustic instruments have one or two I don't know live coders in the same group and try to so fetch their code and maybe try this future interaction or something and this is the most important question is if after learning coding would the musicians still want to play acoustic <laughs> instruments since live coding is so cool so yeah that 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 was the this short history thank you very much we have this this all, all some performances I and mean, we don't record a lot uh, and even feel much but we have some some recordings of some some sessions that it's all uh, in our soundcloud this is my email if you want to be in touch with me and maybe i can answer some questions and still got two minutes just show one or two videos but uh, um i didn't show here of of course because the time time is short but in the in the article I referenced it, some of our performances with some comments, so both good and bad, more bad than good comments. So <laughs> you, you could really get the article and those of you who are interested, the, the videos and some references are all there, you don't need to worry about it. So thank you very much. Oh yeah. Um, Bye. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, are the, the other instrumentalists like more from a, a contemporary music background or free jazz or something like that? Um, because I, I play in some some yeah, yeah. very different play with those different kind of or with music students. Oh just forget about it. Yeah. They they they, they all been uh, they they all went to 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 music uh, instrument degree in the university and like six of, of them are also jazz players so two of them play in a, in a jazz orchestra in Sao Paulo so they are like but not contemporary musicians not contemporary musicians so it, it took a while for them to, to maybe get a grasp of this electronic music stuff or something I think you were um, giving priority to on the screen to the live coders uh, representation, right? But what about the other musicians? Is there any thought that that they should have some screen space as well, so that people can understand what they're doing visually as well as what the live coders is doing? Let me see if I, if I understand. Like, to film, to film their their actions on the instrument and, and also. Well. You might need something like a uh, you know an interpreter who's going to create some some sort of textual representation, or if they're playing jazz, usually there's a chord progression you could show that. Well, no, in, in this in, in, in this I don't know, maybe <coughs> you're not doing. It. But no, I, I, I don't have you thought so. of just trying to provide something that represents what the other mm -hmm. musicians, the acoustic musicians, are doing? Yeah, you no. have to get it somewhere, but. I mean, in, in, in our orchestra, the spring improvisation context, we usually go for free improvisations, but we sometimes try some scripts, so, so everyone has something, uh, a specific role at a specific time to do that, and, and uh -huh. we do that maybe to practice how to interact better. But you don't show that to the audience, the script? When, when we do that, we share uh, that in the program, maybe so the audience know what's happening but it's really very abstract so it's, it, that would be not to lose that the, the pre improvisation of you uh, uh, and, and go to maybe a, a composition or, or guided composition.
directly. So in some countries, you know, you have to have closed captioning on any public broadcast and so forth. Yeah. But it's usually done by an interpreter. Is there a way that you can interpret for an audience, maybe even a, an audience who, that can't hear, uh, what's going on <laughs> through some kind of representation? I, I guess this is a question for the whole community because you mean what's going on yeah, in the pre improvisation so sounds you know, a lot, even, a lot. For, even for those of us who can hear we don't yeah. know what's going on in yeah I, I, I do agree that I mean are you out of time maybe? Okay. Uh, uh, well, I think maybe we can take one more question as well. let me just try to, yeah. to, to give a quick oh. to what I think about that, about that. Uh, um, I agree that in pre improvisation like sessions it can go it, it can go the sounds can go like very abstract, and what I'm, I most try to to pay attention when like I watch improvisation sessions is if they are interacting, if the musicians are interacting, no matter how abstract and on what alien level they are. But I, I try to get some like conversations, some interaction going on. Uh, um, uh, less than fifty percent of the time, I, I, I'm able to find some interaction there, and I I think that when in orchestra hunting when, when we do our sessions, less than half of the time we do achieve a nice conversation. But uh, I mean, it's an extreme practice, and if, if a language base, if I can call it like that, improvisation is is danger, maybe free improvisation is even more. So mm -hmm. you're more apt to not get, uh, I mean, a, a good result than than, than 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 getting a good one. But I don't know. We, we could talk more about that, maybe, thank you. Was there a last one? One more short question for yeah. 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 Maybe more of a comment than a question, actually, but I had a fairly similar project where I worked with a group of pre-improvising okay. uh, musicians where we also had this problem of, like, yeah. do we project or, yeah. or not project? Um, yeah. And in the end, we decided not to, not to project because we didn't want to draw more yeah. attention to the, the code. Mm -hmm. But the, yeah. the, the mo most of the audience members that I spoke to when we did the In our first practice, where I was using the, the, the projections, like, oh, all the musicians were playing, like, what's going on? I never saw this. So, yeah, it's, I mean, there, there's this, this shock factor. It, it's really huge between the acoustic musicians, of course, and our audience had maybe a boosted shock factor. But, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's a difficult question. Maybe the size of the projection also matters. I mean, you, you don't need to blow up stage, but maybe yeah. just have a little yeah. side yeah. projection so you yeah, could pay your attention to it, but then you depend on the attention. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, just, just to really finish that, in, in the article I also wrote about a uh, 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 piece, if I can call it like that, we, we thought tackling all this, this problem of the lack of interaction or <coughs> paying attention to my sounds and to what I was doing. I didn't have time to talk about it here, but you should read. It, it's like fun, at least. <laughs> and thanks a lot for that. Can you hear me, Antonia? Can you wave your hands to the audience? Cool. Oh. So, oh, you should, you should go away. Um, so I brought you another free software. <laughs> so. Uh, <coughs> So this is a uh, collaborative work uh, between, uh, with uh, Antonio Cavallo Jr. and me and uh, my supervisor, Jorge. So, but basically all the, all the implementation is done 
uh, by Antonio. Um, so background is that he's a, he's a visiting student from University of Sao Paulo. He's a computer science PhD student who does computer music, especially network music. And he's the typical type of guy who measure the latency between continents uh, to, uh, to build the network uh, telematic com uh, performances. And then his specialty is in cloud computing. So he just, he had that, before that he had no idea what live coding is. And he came to University of Michigan and we thought uh, we should do live, <coughs> remote live coding performance or do something regarding this and we should write a paper and then this is the result. Um, so every time you see these awful white uh, slides, that's something that I added to his slides. So you know I'm uh, uh, obsessed, with, obsessed with this chart and then I'm trying to uh, <coughs> uh, discuss this, the bottom right part, where people are remotely located and then uh, collaboration happening in synchronous uh, fashion. So uh, remote live coding is not new. Uh, there has been a, 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 a good number of uh, remote live coding performances. One in 2013 induction seminar uh, by Andrew Sarson and Dan Swift. And in, par in this particular conference, we have seen two uh, presentations regarding this uh, remote live coding uh, in Jibber about codes, uh, code state sharing and extra uh that we saw this morning. Then, and then we'll see this evening as a performance. So uh, <coughs> this is something different. So, so, so we, we build a package, atom.io package uh, called SuperCopair. Uh, so it's a mix of pair programming plus live coding on SuperCollider and it used cloud service. So if you're not familiar with atom.io, atom.io is just an editor based on WebKit. So you can freely download the editor. And then it has a lot of package that you can install and then every, any, any user can create a package so that it will extend the existing editor. And it has uh, two great package already called Atom Pair, which is basically you use this Atom editor as a Google Doc-like thing. So you can collaborative, collaboratively edit at the same time, uh, at the same time. And then you have a super collider package that you can run super collider code on Atom Editor. Uh, uh, and then we just, what we just did is we just merged the two package together. Uh, well, although it's not as easy as merging them together, but it's a, uh, we, we basically, functionally, it's the mix of two packages. And we use the cloud service called pusher.com, which is free cloud service. So. Uh, so, like uh, at the lower engine in local machine, you run Super Collider engine, and you edit code on the Atom.io editor, and it talks to the uh, Super Compare package, and Super Compare package talks to cloud service called Pusher. Um, so this is the capture of the uh, Atom.io uh, Atom editor with the package, and you can see two people are connected right now. Uh, the the person number one is selecting this part, and then you can see that in the other person's view that uh, the other person is selecting this uh, uh, portion the, uh, marked by red, and you can see the the exactly opposite by the uh, blue marked se uh, section. So cloud service called Pusher uh, is uh, you can it has a free uh, plan, so you can use it without paying anything. So it uses push notification uh, if it means anything to you. <laughs> so it's a push and push push versus poll. So poll means you're asking the server if, is there anything new? Is there anything new? If there's anything new, you pull the uh, data from the server. Uh, it makes the local client machine busy. So uh, I guess it's it's better to use push. Push means server will push the information wherever whenever there is a new information. Uh, uh, for the I mean, you have a limit that there, there you can only have 20 devices per day uh, for the free plan. And you can have uh, 100K messages per day, meaning that uh, if you, so it's gonna, it's, kind of, it's gonna be one message per letter. So if you have 100 letters per line, you'll, you'll be able to only, up, you'll be able to code up to uh, a thousand lines per day. Uh, but you can 
upgrade your plan and then pay more and then uh, uh, upgrade your limit. Uh, it's 10 messages per second per device, meaning if you're not going to type more than 10 letters per second, I guess it's fine. Um, uh, Antonio did a measurement uh, between uh, <coughs> uh, two cities, uh, one in Ann Arbor uh, at the University of Michigan and one in the University of Sao Paulo. Uh, the average round trip was 230 milliseconds. I guess it's not uh, close to close to uh, like real time, but it's uh, uh, but it's it's okay to to run remote uh, live coding session uh, to exchange idea to do rehearsal. Uh, with Skype uh, on because um, we are just sending symbolic information of code and then uh, uh, the, the signal of execution, uh, signal of ex code execution. Uh, by default, you will use the pusher demo key, which is, it, uh, it means free, uh, but you can uh, pay more money and have uh, increased the limit of the cloud service. So uh, this is the, uh, Diagram of the experiment with it. So he was doing uh, one in an hour. He was uh, the his friend was helping him to run the session. And the data center of the cloud service is located in uh, north northern Virginia. Uh, cool thing is that if you if you this is I mean northern Virginia is the default data center for free plan. But if you upgrade like that, you can choose the data center. So if you move to someplace else, you can. I, I'm sure they have uh, more than 15 data centers, so it could be in Asia, or it could be in, in Norway, it could be in uh, uh, Africa, I guess. Uh, so uh, I guess using cloud service, it's nice to run this uh, pair of programming. It's easy to set up, uh, uh, and you can you can probably scale it to, uh, you can do cloud scale networking, uh, the most important thing is the is serverless. You don't have to run your own server. Uh, uh, the amount of configuration you will need for everyone is amount of uh, configuration you need to create a Google document, I guess. Or slightly less, because you need a Gmail account to create a Google uh, document. Uh, unfortunately, we don't do any synchronization in state or clock, so uh, I guess it has some pros and cons. Uh, for it will, it will not support certain kinds of music, but uh, uh, again, uh, because we are running two local machines at the two two ends, if you send all the codes to one machine, like all all the code that has been evaluated in this local machine will be synchronized so that uh, they will play in sync, but it will not be synchronized with the other machine. Um, <clears throat> so there are three ways to run code. You can select the code and run it. That's a uh, default. Uh, Super collider, shift and the thing. That means we, you're gonna run it locally. So you're gonna run special uh, specific code locally, or you can choose to run globally. So this is good in a way that you can preview things uh, before you submit it to some uh, some other uh, machines. And then if you're sure, you can uh, run it globally. But I real realize that uh, if you run this and if you run this again will have a two redundant state in my local machine. So we created another uh, uh, command that can run excluding myself. So you can choose to run uh, the command in other machine, but not, uh, not my local machine. So we're going to do the demo. Uh, by the way, um, the ironically, both of us are not super collider programmers. So I've been learning uh, super collider since yesterday. Uh, okay. So what I learned yesterday was this and this. No. Is it on? It's the one in the middle. Deja vu.
too. How about we use local speaker? Can you hear something from us? Yeah. Okay. Um, although, I don't know if this will help, but uh, let's do this. So how you install it is very easy. So you go to setting view uh, and then install just search super compare and then uh, because you're not installed yet I mean you'll see this uh, blue thing um, okay That's weird because I tested during the break, giving up my coffee. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, so if you want to create a new session, uh, you will need to look up start a new pairing session and then you'll get a key that you have to uh, give to your collaborators so I'll just copy this uh, and then we're talking on the Skype Okay, you see you, your pair buddy has joined the session. Okay, so he's uh, typing some meaningless words. Okay, we know you're from Brazil. <laughs> Okay, I have no idea what this is, but I'll try. Okay, Starping. Uh So I run it locally. Uh, uh, since he's probably wanting to change something, I'll just create my own line. And then, I don't know. So maybe Antonio, can you run something on my machine? Okay. So I can stop. Uh, actually, can you run it again? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Antonio, can you give me some more? more sophisticated code than this. <laughs> I know you do, I know uh, you don't know how to code in super collider just just give me the set that you have. So I don't know what this is. Okay. So I will be able to run globally meaning that I'm running this here as well as the one machine in Brazil right now. And Antonio, can you stop the sound? Okay, so that's good. Uh, do you have anything else? Okay. So by the way, all the Super Collider users should annoy him so that it will be better. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, I don't. I have no idea what this is. Okay. Bubbly sounds. What if? Uh, what happened if I change something? So I can run globally, stop locally, stop globally, and so forth. And uh, okay. So I guess that's pretty much of it. I mean, so all the menus are hidden in this package menu, so you can evaluate section. You can broadcast your evaluation. Uh, you can broadcast your evaluation, include excluding yourself, and so forth. So or stop the sound uh, gl locally, globally, or excluding yourself. So uh, let's get out of my way. <laughs> okay. Don't do it. <laughs> so demo is done. So we he uh, actually he tested with SuperCollider users in the five different cities at the same time, one in Michigan, one in California, uh, three cities in Brazil, I don't know how exactly I can pronounce it, uh, Sao Paulo, Pereira, Sierra, I guess. And then we, uh, we realized that uh, you can do a lot of malicious things in, in this thing. So, so you can run a, a malicious algorithm and then try to hurt your colleagues uh, here. So then we added permission control, said that uh, if we add a, so let me, is this me? <laughs> okay. Uh, so if you go to package, and setting, if you check this one. Okay, uh, Antonio, can you run anything? Okay, so uh, whenever he asks, uh, run anything, it will ask me if I, I'm going to allow or not. So if I say okay, it will run it. So it uh, somehow needs some, it's a very preliminary thing, but it somehow needs a, 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 a permission control. So I'm gonna ignore it. Uh, and then he witnessed that, that a lot of people uh, joined the session. They talk to each other and teach each other and try to collaboratively uh, fix bugs, uh, which is good. Uh, so we see actually the, the effects of pair programming. And we think this is good for the course of rehearsal process where uh, people are remotely located and you don't have to get together in the same place. Uh, so there's no server. You don't have any uh, separate computer. Uh, you don't need any separate computer for this uh, thing. You just need to download the Atom editor and uh, install the package, and by default, it will use the demo key. Uh, this is supposed to be a question mark, I guess, uh, and then send any suggestion to this email, and uh, this is the package is available at uh, this address, or you can just search super prepare at uh, atom.io. And I think that's it. Thank you. Between machines, no. So, if you if you hook up just uh, so if you hook up main speaker into one of the machine, because there's one state in uh, uh, in in one machine and there's another state in the other machine. Uh, if you keep sending from the other machine, it will be in one state, so everything is running in sync. But it will not be synchronized with the other machine. Uh, and then and the fact that it will try to uh, talk to the data center in uh, Northern Virginia. Well, you have to just keep that in mind. Um, what's the largest number of users that you've tested? Uh, what's the largest number, Antonio? Can you hear? Can you talk? Okay, you cannot talk. Uh, as far as I know, 20. <coughs> okay, 20 people. Because it's, it allows 20 devices per day uh, by default, I guess it's the... Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Any other questions? So let's thank our speakers, both here and remote.